my dad and I are going to hit you with a world-class problem that you've probably never heard of. We're walking through a maize field in Kenya, and that pretty little purple flower is called striga, or witchweed. It attacks the staple crops, maize, sorghum, millet, dryland rice, invading their roots and taking 20 to 80% of their crop yield. It is considered the number one pest threat to food security in Africa. And because in Kenya, where 85% of maize farmers are women, it is a gender-based food security issue. There are no good solutions for striga that are economical, efficient, and reaching the farmers. It is getting worse. This is a world-class problem. This is Patricia, and that was her farm that we were walking through. She's a smallholder farmer. She has one to two acres of land, and her primary crop is maize, which is her source of food for her family. She represents one of 40 million, 40 million <laughs> farmers across sub-Saharan Africa who have striga investing their fields. Well, I'm a plant pathologist, and I'm of that profession whose job it is to protect crops from plant diseases. But maybe we can use our profession in another way. Maybe we can find a disease of a weed and knock it out. Now that is our objective. This is an idea that's been had before, and it almost never works. Why? Because it's not the nature of a fungus to till it, kill its only host. It would be out of a job. That isn't a very good idea. But could we get a fungus to kill its only host? So we have this group of fungi. They're called Fusarium oxysporum. We call them Foxy for short. And these fungi, they attack various weeds or crops, each one a specific weed or a specific crop. Now, the ones that attack striga in Africa, these fungi only take about 40%, leaving the rest for next year. And we have these 40% fungi, and they attack striga, but they only nibble away. But we have a trick. We can trick the fungus into making a few amino acids. Amino acids, in case you don't remember, from high school biology, amino acids are the building blocks of proteins that cause plants or people to grow or die. Well, that's a game changer, because when these fungi now make amino acids, they kill the plant. They kill 90%. Okay, and we have tested them in field trials year after year, and they work. Now, this is not just like a new bio-herbicide or a new herbicide produced by a $30 million herbicide industry. This is a whole new way to kill weeds. And it has great potential. We have done this before. This is not our first rodeo. We have done it with other weeds on other projects. The idea is, the general strategy is, go find a dying weed in the field, isolate out a foxy fungus, hype it up a little bit, and now you have a bioherbicide. Bioherbicides are really a pretty interesting idea. Oh, I think, <laughs> I think we can have a whole new industry here anyway. We can shift the paradigm of plant pathology in a, in a positive way. These bioherbicides are really interesting and useful things. First of all, they can be produced locally. They can be used very inexpensively. They don't produce toxins. They're what we call eco-friendly. They live in the soil for a long time, and they are host-specific. They aren't going to go wandering around in your garden killing the wrong thing. OK. So after my dad worked on developing this bioherbicide technology for decades, my Uncle John walked into the picture. Let's go back to Kenya, where my Uncle John, after he retired as the head of surgery for the Navy, he was volunteering in a hospital. And after seeing patient after patient after patient suffering from malnutrition, he was 
really frustrated and furious and really wanted to get to the bottom of the problem. So he called upon his friend, Florence Oyosi, who's a, an agronomist in Kenya, and said, what's going on? She took him into the village and showed striga plant, striga plant, striga plant, all zapping the nutrients from the, from the locals. So we had this problem. Oh, so he immediately knew the solution, which was 8,675 miles away. So we have this problem, striga, and we have a solution, virulence enhanced fungi. But how on earth do we get the technology into the hands of the smallholder farmers who really need it? This was a real head scratcher. In rural development, one of the most challenging components is getting technology, be it medical or educational or agricultural inputs. The most challenging component is getting it the last mile, getting it all the way down the road to the final user. Florence Oyosi happens to be a last mile expert. She lives in the last mile. So for seven years, back and forth between Kenya and the US, lots of ideas, Ken, uh, Florence and the team figured out a way to get the technology to the farmers in a way that will work. Toothpicks, simple. We use toothpicks. Selin <laughs> Azoki, the plant pathologist in Kenya, grows the fungus on toothpicks. And then he dries them down, and he puts them in the sterile drinking straw, and they're ready for the farmer. And three days before planting, a farmer, she makes a pot of rice, cools it down, and adds the fungus. And then she shakes it twice a day. Shake, 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 shake. For three days. And on the third day, she plants a pinch of this fungus with each kernel of corn that she plants in the field. And the fungus takes it from there. It goes out and kills the striga and protects your plants. And that's why we call it the Toothpick Project. So this is a graph of our proof of concept trials for the Toothpick Project, uh, paired plot trials in 2014 and 2015 on 500 smallholder farms. As you can see, everything above that line shows that there was an increase in crop yield in the treated plots versus the control. But what's really significant is that it was a 56% increase in crop yield in the long season and a 42% increase in crop yield in the short season. This is super significant. This could be three more months of food for each farmer. I have a report from Florence. Florence Ayosi, who ran our trials for us, mentioned her, our good friend. Here's her report. She said that Striga emerged in the eighth week instead of the sixth week. And two weeks after Striga emerged, it wilted and died. Crop yields increased. And, though it hasn't been tested further, it seems that the Foxy depleted the Striga seed bank in the soil. There is currently no Striga growing on the Kayala Primary School farm plots, and the yield is good. So what could the toothpick mean to Patricia? Right now, Striga is the greatest, most immediate barrier to her success. If she has successful crop yield, she can feed her family. And we know that increased nutrition leads to resistance in diseases like malaria and HIV. We also know, because I interviewed many farmers and asked them, what would you do if you had a restored crop yield and had surplus to sell? And all of them, 100% without any hesitation, said they would send their children to school. Well, as a mother, I understand this. Patricia understands this. All of you understand the impact of education. Impact, like our fungus, can do something besides kill striga. It can also impact education for children. So together, with partners from three continents, we've established a social enterprise in Kenya. And we're currently working on distribution and manufacturing to get it to the farmer for as low price as possible so they can see an incredible return on their small investment. Tackling striga, though, is just the first step. We envision a world where bioherbicides are actually reducing chemicals in our soils, our water, and our food, and increasing crop yield. In 2018, we've trained a cadre of really talented 
scientists from 11 countries in Africa. And they came to Bozeman and they learned how to do this striga killing technology, this bioherbicide technology. And I think we have something going there. There are also foxy specialists in 71 other countries around the world. So we're inviting them to join us in our efforts. So we have a couple lessons that we have learned in this journey that we'll share with you because they might apply for something that you're doing. One is that it is important to have a lot of perspectives. It is important to de-silo, have a transdisciplinary approach, especially when you're approaching things like uh, the human condition, food security, mothers and children in education, justice. The second is that our inaction is harmful, and we have 40 million smallholder farmers at stake. So we would like to invite plant pathologists from 170 countries, or however many countries there are, Foxy is everywhere. To, maybe they could also work on killing weeds developing a bioherbicide technology that can compete with the chemical industry. We're pretty grateful to be sharing this stage together, and we do share it with Florence and Sila, our partners in 12 countries in Africa, Germany, France, Israel, and from coast to coast in the US, from San Diego to DC. Most TED Talks end with thanks. So we feel it's most important today to conclude our talk with our friend, colleague, and inspiration, Florence Oyosi. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity of sharing what I had done with women in Maseno, Kenya. Thank you.